So let's go into today's lesson. It's all about faith. Bible faith living. When we say Bible faith living, we're talking about a lifestyle based on faith in God. And I know you, you say, well, I've been hearing this message all my life. But we're going to actually open up some things for you to understand how to do this more effectively. Now, if you don't have your books, we're going to be um, on two particular verses in Hebrews chapter 11. We're going to be focusing on verse 30 and 31 particularly as we talk about this particular faith today. So as you go to those verses, verses 30 deals with Joshua. Verse 31 deals with Rahab. Now, although they only mention them in the book of Hebrews in just two verses, mm -hmm. you can go back into your Bible and you can find the entire story. Go to the first chapter of Joshua and several other chapters of Joshua. They give you the whole story mm -hmm. of what's, what's happened here. But when you begin to look at, at living by faith, many of us enjoy to say it this way. Uh, I'm going to work my faith or I'm going to do faith works. We want to kind of redistribute re, uh, your understanding of faith. Mm -hmm. Remember, whatever you do, you're not doing it to be saved. Just remember that. Do not get it in your head that there's a whole lot of things that you have to do to be saved. Hear the way I'm saying this, mm -hmm. that you have to do to be saved. Only thing you've got to do to be saved is to believe on your Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Believe that he is your Savior. Believe that you are lost without him, that you are a sinner. And then you accept him as your Savior. You do not have to have to bleed bullets and try to work some, some, some plan out. And it's not a feeling. Mm -hmm. It's a decision yes. made from the heart. It's a decision. You decide, I'm going to live for the Lord. And you do not have to know how to live for him. I'm a living witness. I was a, a pagan or a, a heathen for 21 years. So I know what it's like not to know God and to come to God. And if you had to know how to be saved, to live for the Lord, other than believe, I would have missed the whole boat. Because I didn't know nothing absolutely nothing so don't think that we're teaching you how to be saved mm -hmm. now we are teaching you how to stay that way mm -hmm. because it's all by faith but it's not uh, faith that's leading or uh, working off of your works mm -hmm. but it's your your works working off of your faith yes. which simply means we're not dealing with the fruit we're dealing with the root because if you deal with the fruit, you can take the fruit off the tree, but that tree does not die. It still lives. And you're going to have times in your life when your fruit is not going to be so noticeable. You're going to get upset. You're going to be angry. We pray that you see and not. You're going to have times that you're not going to tell the truth, either accidentally or on purpose. And I'd like to think that you don't lose everything you ever believed in just because that happens. Mm -hmm. It's because the, the faith is the key. Mm -hmm. If you believe God, if you believe he's your Lord and Savior, then you're going to learn how to do more to please him. Here's what it said in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. He said, without faith, it is impossible to please God. So you can go to church every day. That does not mean you're pleasing God. You can sit in two-hour service. I've been in four-hour meetings that lasted for years. And I'm telling you right now, you know, that's one of the reasons why I'm careful about where I go fellowship because I, I just can't handle them long service, man. I'm, I'm just, you know, I just, I'm, my mind's going too quick. I, be, I, I just, I just, I, I found out it's not necessary. You don't have to stay in church all day to, to exercise your faith. But, but I can tell you this, whenever you look at the faith that you have, it says without faith, it's impossible to please God. So the number one priority to please God is faith. What is faith? Faith says in that same verse, believe that God is. 
and believe that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him and get your butt in gear. That's right. That means do everything you can to get more of him, more understanding. Not more church, more understanding. Church is going to be here. Mm -hmm. It's going to stay here, but you need understanding. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're striving for, understanding. Believe that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. That's all. That's right. And I was thinking about, you know, the whole lesson is about faith in action. And I remember, this is going to sound funny, but, you know, I remember um, going through transition in my life, and I could not afford a blender, so... You know, and I wanted to make some brownies for my daughter. So I get the brownie mix, and you know, I see on the back that it says, you know, you got the mix and the eggs and all this stuff. And they said, well, blend, you know, the stuff together. So I'm like, well, I can't, you know, I can't afford a blender, so what am I gonna do? And the Lord was like, get that spoon and beat that stuff. <laughs> so, you know, I began to beat the little mix, and I found out that it came out the same way. And I said this to say this, I had everything else together, but at first my excuse was, God, I don't have this. I don't have that. What we have to do concerning our faith is work what you got. If you don't have a blender, get a spoon. Whatever the case may be in your situation, work what you got. But I cannot look at that mix. I couldn't look at the egg and say, oh, I wish I had some brownies. Oh, if I could just get these brownies that's on that box. No, I had to put some faith, my faith into action. And I believe that if I did what I needed to do, how I needed to do it, regardless of the method, I was going to get the result. That's what we need to do concerning our faith. You put it into action. And I remember thinking when I first got saved, because I was still trying to understand this, this faith thing, I would close my eyes and like, okay, you know, if the Bible says if I believe, I'm going to receive. So I was thinking that I could just wiggle my nose, so to speak, and, you know, poof. It, it didn't work that way. I had to do some things. I had to position myself and also walk in faith, meaning there was something I had to do. It's not just going to appear. When our faith is in action, that means I'm walking in the precepts of God, doing what I need to do, whatever the case may be in my situation, for my desired result. And, and you know, another important thing is having the right ingredients. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't have anybody to tell me this, but I, I, I like, uh, what do we call the pancake mix? Jiffy. Uh, yeah. Jiffy uh, cornbread, cornbread mix. Cornbread. Jiffy cornbread mix. And nobody told me that you can't use almond milk <laughs> i mean it's healthy for you it's really great for you have you ever tried to use almond milk to make you some nice juicy really tasty cornbread <laughs> it won't work now another thing is i i was mixing it up and 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 i got the right milk but somewhere I didn't see that, that part where it said you add one egg. So I didn't add the egg. And it, it, was, it was definitely another mess. So it's not enough to have all the ingredients that you've got to mix and stir up and fix right. You've got to know that you've got the right ingredients in there. The equipment, I mean. Remember, just because you got the equipment does not mean you're going to get the right results. That just because you can say it with your mouth, does not mean it's going to happen the way it should happen. Here's what Jesus said in Mark, uh, Mark 11. He makes this statement. He said, if you can believe in your heart that what you say will come to pass, mm -hmm. then you will have what you say. A lot of us say it, hoping that we can believe it one day in our heart, and it doesn't happen. And we wonder, well, what's wrong? I said it. I said I'm the head and not the tail. I said I'm above and not beneath. I said I'm, I believe that God is and all things are possible with God. Did you really believe it when you were saying it? Or were you saying it hoping it would come to pass? Doesn't work that way. You got to have the right ingredient. You can't work it from the fruit. I mean, uh, uh, use the, the, the terminology of because I got the right fruit, then all I got to do is just enjoy the fruit. No, no. You got to take care of the root. That simply means you got to feed yourself, your spirit man, the right stuff. Reason believers are not living the way they should live today, I firmly believe, is because they don't know. They don't understand. And some of us, we make the bad, bad mistake of talking to everybody like everybody knows everything. 
because they say they believe in the Lord. Not the case. There are a whole lot of folks that don't know. You know they don't know that all you got to do is believe in your heart and stand on it. It says here that by faith the walls of Jericho fell down after they were encircled for seven days. Walls of Jericho, you've, you've, read, you've sung the song, Joshua fought the battle of Jericho, Jericho, you know, I know a little bit of that. Yeah, but you got to understand, those walls didn't come down because they were walking around them. It came down because they believed that if they did what God said, God would do what he said he'll do. Many times we don't receive the promises of God because we expect the promises without the work. And the work is not physical. The work is in the heart. You will receive the promises after you've done the will of God. Don't ever forget that. Well, what's the will of God? I've got to be in church at least twice a week. I've got to pay my tithes and my offerings. I've got to do all these other things. I've got to be a part of all these programs. That's, what, that's what's necessary. No, it's not. You just got to believe. And whatever it takes for you to believe, you need to do it. You know, a lot of folks marvel and say, well, how do you know the Bible so well? And they don't understand. I have spent my 45 years doing nothing but read, 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 study, study, study. Spent times. I started counting one day. I've got all these books, and I started looking at the prices I paid for. And that my, my, my natural flesh said, man, what I could have done. I got about $45,000, $50,000. And, and prices, I said, well, I got to stop this because this is making me really feel like that maybe I, <laughs> I could have spent that money doing some other thing. And God reminded me. He said, buy wisdom and sell it not. Whatever it takes for you to know God, do not be slack in it. Most of it's going to take time, like right now. Those of you that are here right now, this is costing you. This is not free. Although we don't have a price tag on it, it's costing you because time, just like they say in the world system, time is money. Your time is precious, and you've taken that time off to learn more about God. Well, Joshua, all he did was believe God. First chapter of Joshua mm -hmm. sets the pattern. That first chapter of Joshua, and we've got it in the book. It's, it's in your footnotes down there. But that first chapter of Joshua says it this way. It says that, that, that God came to Joshua, and God said to Joshua, he said to him, Moses, thy servant is dead. Get up. See, this is what we need to preach to all of God's people. Some of us, we're still stuck in how things used to be yesterday or last year or last uh, several years or how we used to praise God. How you, I mean, I have tore the church down. I have, man, I have jumped pews. I have stood on top of it. You name it, I've done it. I've gone into, I've gone into juke joints and preached the gospel. I've gone to trailer parks and preached the gospel. I've done it on the streets. I've done it everywhere, and I mean, I, my voice right now gets hoarse after a few minutes because I have wore that sucker out. It's, I, keep, I, keep saying, I keep saying, Lord, what am I going to do if my voice don't work? He says, you got the pen, write it. Right. So I've already determined when my voice gives out, I'm still going, you're, you're not going to get rid of me. I'm going, I'm going, and we've got hundreds now. A video, so you never, you the never gonna come to town. You say, I right, boy, that, that rascal's dead. He's gone now. We can forget about him. Stuff we're doing now is gonna live forever. Don't you know that you can speak for yourself to your future generations? You don't have to have them interpret it. You can do it yourself. Let your faith speak out. You know, if you believe in God, don't go around trying to do right. Just keep striving to be right. Come on. Did you hear what I said? Yep. Don't go around trying to do right. Just strive in your heart of hearts to be right. And to be right, you've got to have God where he needs to be in your heart. Rest still to work out itself. I'm serious. It will, it's, it, the best life to live is the Christian life. It is so easy. Somebody said, no, it's hard. It's tight. No, it's easy. It's easy if you make up your mind that God is right. Yes, 
and you make up your mind that I'm not in this by myself, he lives inside of them all. Mm -hmm. So if I need to find God, I don't need, oh, God, where you at? Come, Lord, come, Jesus. Come by here, oh, Lord, come by here. Yeah, I don't have to do all that stuff. Why? Because he's in me. He's in me. Where is my husband? Where is my wife? I need somebody to give me a word. Well, you got 66 books of word with you right in your, right now you got it on your cell phone or whatever you got. And God is in you. That's right. Powerful. Amen. Now, it's, it's a, one key thing that the Lord told Joshua after Moses died, and that Joshua chapter 1, let's look at verses 5 and 6. It says, no man, he, this is what he told Joshua, no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Then he said, be strong and of good courage, for to this people you shall divide as an inheritance to the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. So he told um, Joshua, Moses is dead, now it's time for you to move forward. And he said, I'm gonna be with you just like I was with Moses. But mm -hmm. the key here, he says, be strong and good courage. Now I wanted to read what the definition of courage says because a lot of times we know how to be strong, but it also says be courageous. But what does courageous mean? We hear it all the time. One definition means strength in the face of pain or grief. The ability to do something that frightens one. So not only do we have to be strong, but we have to be courageous in the face of pain or grief. And as we were talking this morning, I said, I know how to, you know, be strong and courageous in the face of uh, grief. But when it comes to pain, it's almost like, you know what, I don't need all that. You know, it's kind of like I'm not jumping in that fire. But it says when we are courageous, we are strong in the face of both pain and grief and that's what we have to remember god told us to be strong and courageous meaning life is not going to be easy but we can look at it that way because we're strong we're being courageous so this is what we have to look at when we look at faith the faith walk is not going to be easy and we know that because we're all living the faith walk when we look with our eyes it's going to look impossible but when we look at what god has said all things are possible to those who believe. And we have to remember, be courageous. And it takes work. Just like we work our faith in action, it takes work. It's not simple. It takes you, and it's not physical work that I'm talking about. It takes work in your spirit. Remembering those scriptures, um, faith scriptures. When I get in that point where I need a word from God, where I need faith, I start thinking of all the faith scriptures. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I start thinking of all the word that's already in me to help me be courageous. And I thought about this, this childhood thing that I used to love to do every year. And most of us are familiar with The Wizard of Oz, right? Mm -hmm. Seen The Wizard of Oz? Yeah. Well, in the movie, the lion, you know, he's going to see the witch for courage. And I think about, you know, he was so scared all the time. <laughs> and, you know, and I'm thinking as a lion, naturally, one looks at a lion as being strong, being brute. And that's how people look at Christians. They, they, they want us or they expect us to be strong. But a lot of times we are like that lion. We can say big, strong, we got a big bark, but no bite. Most of us like, put him up, come on, like he was doing in the movie, come yeah. on. And then the first sign of trouble, he's running. Oh, my God. Yeah. How many of us do that all the time? And we may not do it publicly, but when something hits our door, we're like, uh-uh, wait a minute, God, you got the wrong house. And no, he's saying, no, I have the right house. <laughs> I'm at your house. It's time for you to step it up and believe. And that's one of the things I was telling the pastor he's been doing in my life since we've been in this faith thing. You know, there'll be days where I just need to, to be encouraged. It, it, I don't care where I am. It'll be on the church sign. Whatever I need, I'm like, how is that happening? It will be on a bumper sticker. It'll be on a license plate. It'll be like yesterday we saw one that says, get God. Then I saw one that says, walk by faith. Then I was going to buy a church the other day. The sign says, um, stop stressing. I got this. God. And I'm like, what in the world? Everywhere I went, God was preaching to me on a billboard. That's how God does when we walk in faith. And now that he's been doing that lately, I'm looking. You know, I'm looking on T-shirts. <laughs> you know, I'm looking everywhere because I know that he's going to speak to me. And it just increases my faith. It, it's almost like to the point where I know God's got it. And that's how he does with us. When we walk in faith, it only gets better because we're like, if he did it then, he's going to do it today. 
God has never forsaken us. And like the scripture says, I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging of bread. Are we righteous? Then what are we worried about being forsaken? Sometimes we feel like, God, you forgot me. What about me? I'm in this pain. I'm in this grief. I'm dying. But God has said, no, I'm using all of that. I'm working it all for your good. Doesn't the scripture say that he's, he's going to work all that for our good in Romans 8 and 28? But why do when we get in tough spots, we're like, oh, no, God, you sure? Yes, he is sure. You're the one that needs to be convinced. And I found out that once I settle in my spirit, okay, God, this is working for my good. When I settle it in my heart, then everything works out. But, before, but until I settle it, I'm struggling, I'm fighting, I'm kicking, I'm screaming, like, why? And as soon as I calm down, like, okay, God, you got this. That's when God can work. Because now I believe, truly I believe, and not just speaking it. And that's what, the way we have to be with our faith. So two words. Two words will change every situation. Two words will change every circumstance. Two words, just two words. Two magic words that if you say to yourself, when whatever you're going through, if you can say this and believe it, then it'll change your situation. What are those two words? Be strong and very courageous. That's it. Be strong. I was dealing with a, uh, 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 a lady once that was, her husband was very abusive. And, um, you know, it was like I told her, I said, what you've got to do is you've got to stand up for the Lord. Because she would mention the Lord and he would go ballistic and start fighting and swinging and carrying on. And I said, uh, next time he cuts up like that, just call on the name of the Lord and stand there and don't run. I said, stand there and let him know, I am not afraid of you. You will not touch me again or you're going to jail. And I stand, I'm a believer, and I'm going to be a believer, and I'm going to serve God. I don't care what you say. Well, this lady was, she was terrified. She said, what am I going to do? Please tell me what I'm going to do. I, you know what I said? I said, be strong and do it. It stuck like a piece of glue. So every time I've had somebody come to me in a panic and say what to do, and I share with them what to do, well, I'll always tell them, they always like, oh, here they go. I'll do it. I, I really will do it. I'm going to do it. I promise you, I'm going to do it. But I'm looking at their body. If I'm going to do it, you're doing this. <laughs> you are not doing that. I always pay attention to the body language. Husbands, wives, when you're talking to one another, if your wife or your husband is saying, well, you know, I trust you. I mean, I, I, would, I would never believe you'd do something like that. You know? or, I know you didn't spend the, the, the food money on a dress. Or, no, I know you didn't do nothing like that. I'm, I'm, honey, I love you. You be careful because you're, you, 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 you're giving a no signal with your body. <laughs> And answer them with a yes. Mm -hmm. Or you ever had anybody say, uh, uh, you, you got that? And they're going, yes. And they go, you know, I can't say what I want to say. But anyway, they do opposite. You know what yeah. <laughs> I want to say? I mix up the syllables a little bit on that word, and I'll say something like bass acrid. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's mixing it up, but, but they get the point. Mm -hmm. You've got to recognize that you've got to be strong. Well, how am I going to be strong? Read your Bible. Here's what God said. I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. They switched the word. Jesus is redeemer. Christ is the anointed one, the glory, and the power. We are still depending on Jesus when we ought to be depending on his office. He's the Christ, the anointed one. The all-powerful one. So that's what we've got to do. So if you if you ever run into a I, I know you do. If you ever run into a situation where they say you can't do it, and it's not a bad thing, like you can't go drink a fifth of liquor. You know, you know of course you don't want to do that. But but I mean it's a good thing. You know, you, you want to get promoted. You want to do good. You know, I, I think about um, uh, Vanna. She was talking to me the other day, and she was like. I want so much to be able to do good, but what am I going to do? How am I going to do this? And, and I told her, I said, who are you? She said, you know, I'm okay. I said, no, you, you're part of me. You're part of us. 
And I told her, I said, listen, you are not average. Parents, stop telling your children they're average. They are not. If they are part of your life, your children are not average. They are above average. And I told her, I said, do your very best to not just make it in. Not just do what you think you ought to do. Always excel. Mm -hmm. Always go the extra mile. Always do your very best. And I told her this, and we say it all the time. I, I tell her just about every day she go to school. I tell her, I said, always remember this. Do your best and God will do the rest. Right. Say it with me. Do your, your best, best. best and God will do the rest. If you take that. <laughs> As that old movie used to say, you can take it to, to the, the bank. bank. <laughs> but if you would always remember that, no matter, I wish I was, when I was her age or your age, I wish somebody would have told me I can do anything I want to do. I wish somebody would have told me that I can exceed and excel. I don't have to live in myself. My mama, the worst thing she ever told me, she made it to the, 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 the 10th grade. All the high she went in school. When I was in the 10th grade, and getting ready to move into the 11th grade, uh, she told me, she said, you have really reached the pinnacle of what you can do. She said, I wanted you to at least get to the 10th grade. And then the next thing, I got to 11th grade, and, and I, I, you know, with different things going on, I was like, Mom, I don't know that I'm gonna be able to, 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 to do this. You know what she said to me? She said, well, you know, I didn't make it no further than 10th grade. You made it to the 11th grade, so you're all right. You know, and I'm like, come on. If I had somebody to motivate me, somebody to tell me I can do better, yes. I can be above average, I can do what I need to do. I mean, Van, she'll cry when she don't get an A. And I, I don't want to see her crying because she thinks the A is what it's all about. So I tell her, I said, I said uh, 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 is that the best grade you got? Is that, is, is, if you got anything, she said, well, I got a B, and that just told me on. I said, listen, did you do your best? And she said, yeah. I said, well, if you get an E and you've done your very best, you're not going to get a rebuke from us. Make sure it's your best. Because, you see, that's what it's all about. And school is training you how to be an adult. Don't ever work a job or do anything and just give them what they ask for. You know, and think when you give them what they ask for, you've done every job I've ever worked, everything I've ever done. I always went one step further. I always did a little extra because I knew because uh, in my heart of hearts, I could never be average. Mm -hmm. Average stinks. And average is a choice. Mm -hmm. A lot of folks don't know this. They think, well, you know, the, 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 the teachers and the, and the different ones, they'll just say, well, you're doing better than most folks. That's not enough for me. Am I giving my best? Mm -hmm. Am I doing my best? I can do. I can do. I can do all things. There's nothing I can't do. Not, not, you, I mean, nothing. I'm not a rocket scientist, but I'll jump up and start building a rocket overnight if it's required of me. I can say it in your spirit. It's in the Bible. Yes. It's, it's the book. Yes. You know, you, you better not drink. I hadn't read that in the Bible. You know, you, 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 you better not pop the pill. You better not do that. I've not really read that exactly like that in the Bible either. But I read in the Bible exactly the way it is. I can do all things. So your greatest work of faith is to be strong. And when you can't do it, remember, God can take you through it. When you can't do it, remember, God can take you through it. Yes. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Where is your strength coming from? It's not coming from my mama, my daddy, my sister, my brother, my parents, my boss. It's coming from Jesus. But remember, Jesus is the sacrifice. Christ is the anointing. So when you get in trouble, you know, don't say Jesus Christ. When you get in trouble, say Christ Jesus. Why would it make a difference? Read your Bible. Do a word search. Do a study. Every time they put Christ in front of Jesus, there's glory. Mm -hmm. There's something happening because that's the anointing. Mm -hmm. Jesus is the redeemer. The Christ is not his last name. The Christ is his office, his anointing, his authority. By the name of Christ, I'm doing what I do. That's the power of it all. Very courageous. Very courageous. Not just courageous. That's average. 
Anybody can be courageous. God told Job, said, be very Amen. courageous. That means get to a point where you, you know, folks know that you ain't scared. I mean, you can do that. Can you do that? <laughs> Look at that. That sweet sound. Oh, that is so cool. <laughs> Lord have mercy on us. When, when you were talking, it reminded me of um, what Paul said. You know, a lot of times we feel like we cannot be strong. But let's look at what Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. He said, this is after he went to the Lord and said, I need you to remove this, this infirmity from me. Take it because I can't handle this. And he said it to me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. God's strength is made perfect in our weakness. So he says, most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. And most of us don't like to be weak. But when I read this, it reminds me that God's strength is made perfect. That's a strong word. His strength is made perfect when I'm weak. So we win across the board. When I feel like I cannot make it another day when I'm weak, that's when God gets the most glory out of my life because I realize this is not me. I am not standing because of my power. I am not standing in this because of my strength, but it's God's glory. It's God's strength. So remember in your times of weakness, when you feel like I'm never going to make it, you know, I keep messing up. Why do I keep falling? Your major point should be get up. Regardless how many times you fall, get up and realize that God's strength is made only made perfect in your weakness because when we are strong, when we feel strong, we don't think about God. We're like, I got this, you know. I got it, God. I'll be back. I got it. But when we're weak, we realize, no, I need a higher power, and that higher power must be God. You, you know, I believe that God is a healer. Mm -hmm. I firmly believe that there's no doubt in my mind that God is a healer. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say something now that most preachers won't tell you. There are some pains that you're going to have to live with. Amen. There are some pains that you're going to have to live with. <laughs> Definitely going to have to live with. I, I think about myself, and, and uh, standing here now, I'm nodding, I'm moving around, I'm doing all. But do you know since 2007, I have never been without pain? This, this side of me right here, this leg right here, there's a rod here. There are boats attaching it to my my hip. I mean whatever that bone is, I don't know what it is. But anyway, there's a the rod the 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 rods here. This goes right down to just above my knee. And the doctor told me that it was gonna be better than it was before it was broke. My 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 uh, tibia fibia which is it tibia I think that's the big one. It was it was snapped. It was broke and it pulled my whole hip out of the socket. I was in a car wreck. Pulled my whole hip out of the socket. He put it back in. He did everything right. And, and to this day, I know the difference. For one thing, the only thing that, that, that stops it from aching is I get another ache. If I get a headache or some other ache, I don't even notice it. But, but it's always there. And I, I, I've prayed to God. I said, God, why? Why can't I just be pain free? And God said, does that hinder your doing what you need to do for me? I said, no. He said, well, my grace is good enough. Mm -hmm. You got my grace, go for it. So, and it's amazing because this is my shopping side. <laughs> I mean, I'm serious. You look at me and laugh. I'm telling you the God awful truth. <laughs> this is my shop. When the spirit of God hits me, it hits me on my head without the hair. <laughs> It, it hits me on my head. It goes through this arm. It comes all the way down this arm, and it's like a lightning bolt. It goes down this side. And I'm saying, God, I got a rod in here. You know, I got the boats in here. I need to kind of, you know, watch it. But when God gets a hold of me, darlings, that leg goes up. I'm hopping and, scop and, and skipping all over the place. I'm running. I'm just going wild. And while I'm doing all that, there's no pain. I mean, not a lick of pain. But after it's over with, then the pain is there. And, and it's different. This leg here, they put it on, and I can see the error of man. I have always been straight you know, as a walker. I don't know whether you're paying attention to how you walk or not, but I've always been straight. Both my feet have always been this way. I'm not, not like that, but this way. Not saying there's anything wrong with that, but Mine have always been straight. But when they got through with this side here, 
Look, and you can't see it, but those in the front row can see it. Look at that rascal right there. You see where that thing's at? That rascal looking over yonder. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I'm talking about, I'm talking about the evidence, and I try, I try my best to straighten it as much as I can. But when I straighten it, it hurts so bad. So they hooked it up wrong. When they connected it, they didn't connect it straight. They, <laughs> I don't know how they did, but they messed it up. Another thing about this leg is if I really let it do what it wants to do, I'd, I'd walk like this. Do you know why? Because this leg over here, and I measured it, this leg over here is about that much shorter than this leg over here. It wasn't that way before the wreck. I lost an inch on this side somehow or other. You know, so I mean, you but you look at me. How many of y'all already knew that? I mean, you may think I'm crazy, but how many of y'all already knew I had physical uh, uh, issues? I do, but you never see it. I stand for hours. I walk, I talk, I do what I need to do, and I'm able to compensate. I make this foot look straight even when it don't want to be straight. I, 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 I never hop. If you see me hopping, you know I'm having a, a bad day. But I found out that it doesn't change grace. It doesn't change the fact that God is a healer. Now, I'm believing God for complete healing, but I'm not waiting for the results. I've already got it. Mm -hmm. So I walk by faith, and if it's there, I've got that scripture to lean on. Mm -hmm. Where God told, uh, told um, uh, Paul, he said, you know, with the things I've revealed to you, I've shown you, with those things, there's got to be something to remind you that, that you know, I'm, your, I'm still your God. And you still need me. And I think about it. Some folks say, well, I want to be able to understand like you understand. There's a cost. Mm -hmm. There is a cost. Are you willing to pay it? That's the key. Are you willing to pay it? Because there is a cost. There are certain things you will endure. Those bad circumstances, those bad relationships, those bad financial uh, things you've gone through, that sometimes is the cost. You may be saying, why do I always have to be, the, my bills never seem to be, I'm never able to pay them well. Sometimes that's the part of your faith. you got to still believe God regardless of what's going on. You've got to believe God. I'm telling you, it's not easy. It takes more work to believe God than it do to look like I'm doing everything right. A lot of folks want to look like they're right. They want to be associated, affiliated with certain ones that are right. Listen to me, darlings. The main thing is, are you right with God? Yes. Are you in the right relationship with God? Is God able to have your attention no matter where you are? If that's okay, then forget all the rest. Don't be concerned about whether man is pleased with you or not. Don't be concerned about whether you qualify in man's eye. Because, listen, you can qualify in man's eye and still die. That's right. That's true. That's true. You can qualify in his eye and spend the rest of your eternity in hell. No, I want to qualify in God's way. And God said, if I don't have faith, I can't please him. Listen, Joshua told the people, he said, we're going to march around this wall. We're going to do it once a day for six days. Six days, all they did was came out, got up early in the morning, came out, and the way they, they did it, there was an order. There was an order. First, they had the, the, the fighting men out front. Mm -hmm. Then they had the ones with the trumpets. Then they had the Ark of the Covenant. Mm -hmm. Then they had the other captains behind them. Then they had the people. There was an order. Every day they marched around. And Joshua told us, don't say a word. None of you talk. But as they were marching, the ones with the trumpet were blowing the trumpet. Can you imagine? I'm sitting in, on an impre impregnable wall, one that has never been penetrated, one that has resisted all the different things. And I see a, a million and a half people march around not saying a word. Blowing the trumpet, and they marched and they went back into camp. Come back the next morning, the same old thing. Can you imagine some of those soldiers saying, "Well, what's going on?" Oh, they're just walking around. Well, 
What's that guy doing? Oh, nothing. They just they just looking at us and wanting us to see them. They just showing up just to show up. And for six days they did it. On the seventh day, the Bible said they were told to march around it seven times. So on the seventh day, they marched around that wall seven times. Can you imagine a million and a half people marching around a wall and those men blowing those trumpets while they just march around the wall on the seventh day and the seventh time around? Then Joshua said to them, shout with all your might. Come on, come on. And they just raised their voices, all of them shouted. And the, the, the Bible says it this way, the walls straightway fail. It's like opening a can of tuna. Some said they just crushed down into the ground. But the Bible says straightway they fail. Straightway means the way that, that, that all they had to do was walk right over. Mm -hmm. They fail. What's going on in your life? What's happening in your life? Have you already met something that seems to be impossible? Have you already run across something that seems like, I don't know how I'm going to deal with it. I don't know how I'm going to handle it. You're going to handle it by faith. That's right. When I say by faith, it simply means you're going to hold on to God. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what they're doing to you. Hold on to God. Believe God and obey what he tells you. He will talk to you. Don't you let folks lie to you. And that's not your head and it's not the devil. It's God. He will talk to you. And he will tell you what to do as you obey him. Certain things that I have done, and LT will tell you at the last minute, I'll say something that's flat out impossible. I mean, I'll say stuff to her like, uh, she'll say, well, well, we got this coming, this coming, this coming, this coming. And she expects me to say, okay, we need to back up on this, we need to back up on that. And then when I tell her, I said, let's increase what we're doing here and what we're doing here and what we're doing there. And she will look at me with them pretty eyes. And, uh, and she'll go ahead and, and do it. And then the thing that surprises me is after she has done it and after we've gone through it, the Lord shows up and that's real good. She comes back to me and says, man, it worked. <laughs> like, well, I thought you were with me to start with. <laughs> Come to find out, she was just having to, she was just having to yeah. do like, like the, 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 the children of Israel doing. She just had to take the word. Yeah. And, you know, crazy things we do it all the time and God works mm -hmm. it's not that's what you call working it from the root to the fruit mm -hmm. meaning I'm going to produce apples or oranges or whatever I'm going to produce but it's going to be the size the color the texture the taste is going to be dependent on what I'm feeding mm -hmm. the root mm -hmm. so you see if I'm studying if I'm doing the right thing if I'm getting the right kind of word then my fruit's going to flourish and you got to recognize that there are a lot of believers that are trying to have make sure the fruit is right. Mm -hmm. They want to make sure there's no worms, there's no none, that everything's perfect about the fruit. But they're working from the fruit down. That's right. Instead of realizing you got to work from the root to the fruit. Mm -hmm. Get the root right and the fruit's going to turn out fine. Mm -hmm. Best watermelons I ever ate were watermelons that were prepared the right way. Well, you know something that's really interesting? I have never eaten a watermelon that was as sweet and as tasty as the watermelons they used to do back in the day before they took cow manure and used it as fertilizer. I mean, they got fertilizer now, they got soda now, and all that, but I'm telling you, the sweetest watermelons I ever ate were the ones that they dropped, the, they dropped manure around them as the fertilizer. So you see, don't think that sometimes the rough things you're going through are going to mess up the plans of the fruit you're supposed to be producing. Sometimes the worst smelling things that you're going through are going to produce the best kind of fruit. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the worst situations, mm -hmm. worst circumstances, the worst things you're experiencing, you might think they're going to mess your fruit up. Mm -hmm. But if you will let them do their perfect work, they're going to produce the best fruit you ever had. I can do things in Christ right now, not because I preserve the fruit. I can do them because I preserve the root. What is the root? I'm rooted, grounded in Jesus Christ.
Christ Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Amen. And we, we hear the term all the time about it's not about you. But you would be surprised what your faith does for other people when we stand in the faith. And it's the same situation in Joshua chapter 2, verses 10 and 11. It says, But we have heard how the Lord dried up the water, the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt, and what you did to the kings of the Amorites who were on the other side of the Jordan, Sion and Oz, whom you utterly destroyed. And as soon as we heard these things, our hearts melted. Neither did there remain any more courage in anyone because of you. For the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and on the earth and beneath. So people are looking at us. They are looking at whether we're going to stand or whether we're going to crumble. And it's hard to, to, um, to really accept sometimes because you feel like, you know, they just want me to fall. No, sometimes they are watching to see, you know, is she really made of what I think she's made of? And I think about, you know, the testimony of one of a, a mutual friend that we have with Minister Sharon, and she is just blown away with Minister Sharon's faith that where she is now. To her, it is just, she cannot believe it because she's known her and she's seen her grow. Somebody is watching us. And I have people that are come to, that knew me 10 years ago, and they are shocked that I'm, I'm doing what I'm doing now because they knew the frailty of what I was then, but my faith in God that caused me to want more, that caused me to want to grow, it is blessing them now. Somebody is watching you. So it's not about whether you overcome that trial. Somebody else is, it's not about you. They want to see the God in you work. They want to see if the God you've been talking about works for you. Because we can't tell them that he'll work for them if we don't, he, they don't see us working in our lives. How can I say that God will pay my bills? God will work miracles if he's never doing it for me. If he's never healed my body. We must be living examples and remember, someone else is watching me and they may never say a word to you. It may be years down the road, but somebody is watching our, in our lives and they need to know that there's a God that works. There's faith that works. Not just on Sunday morning, not just on Wednesday or whenever we have our Bible study, but they need to know that God works whenever we need him. And that's been my joy and my strength. When I've been down in faith, I will go to somebody that I know that has immovable faith. I'm like, look, I need, a, I need, I need some strength. And when they begin to tell me the stories, and when they begin to tell me the testimonies of what God did for them, my faith is built, and I'm strengthened. And I leave that conversation, or I get off that phone, like, okay, God, if you did it for them, you're the same God. You can do it for me. So remember, it's not about us. Somebody else needs to know about that God in you. Not so much through us talking. But they need to see you standing in faith in those hard times. Can you imagine what it was like with Daniel and the lion's den? The three Hebrew boys. People were watching them. And people are watching us in the fire of life. We say we love God. We say we have faith. But do we run at the first sign of trouble? Do we fall apart when everything around us seems not to go our way? And we like it our way. Sometimes we get caught up and, you know, I want it my way or it's the highway. <laughs> and, and faith, it does not work that way. And, you know, it's funny because I love the relationship I have with God. Sometimes he'll say, look here, Missy, you cannot have it your way all the time. He'll jack me up in my spirit when I start acting funny. He's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I know, I'm trying to explain. He's like, no, that's not how we work. And so all it takes is that one little moment. And I get my little self together, and I'm good. So we have to remember, it's not about us. It's not about having it our way. But it's about, is God glorified? Mm -hmm. Is God glorified by me having an attitude against someone? Is God glorified when I doubt? So we have to ask ourselves, in everything we do, in everything we believe, will God be glorified through what I'm doing? Will God be glorified through how I'm even believing in my heart? Because people may not see what you're believing or what you're thinking, but God does. And he is pleased when we believe on him. So remember that. Will God be glorified with what I'm thinking and what I'm doing? Because they're watching you. Yeah. Everybody's watching you. Yeah. And they need to. If you're saying something that you're not backing up, it needs to be brought to your attention. Mm -hmm. I'm serious. So when folks criticize you, I learned the hard way. Listen carefully what I'm about to say because it's not going to sound good. But I learned the hard way. When somebody criticizes you, examine yourself. They may be wrong, 
but you make sure they're wrong. Examine yourself. Because if you do that, then what will happen is you will make the right decision to do the right thing every time. I never take criticism lightly. LT will say, well, you know, they're just mad. They're just upset. But I take it to heart. And I go to God when I don't go to man. I go to God and say, God, they, this is what they said. Show my heart. Show me. Mm -hmm. If I got some of that in me, help me to see it, Lord. And there are times that God will show me mm -hmm. that I got the seed there or that I've got certain things that are not exactly right. So remember, when it comes to living for the Lord, pay attention. Don't feel bad because every time you turn around, people are talking about you. Let them talk. Now, every time I need to keep my, someone said, need to keep my name out of their mouth. No, let them talk. Just don't let it be true. Right. <laughs> as long as you can let them talk and it's not true, you won the battle. You know, I remember having, uh, uh, going through some things when I had a lot of folks just eating me for lunch. I mean, just, I mean, just, I mean, they're just hating on I'm like, Lord, they, they hate me. I said, Lord, they, I have enemies I didn't know even had. I said, what am I going to do? And God said, nothing. I said, what do you mean, nothing? He said, just keep doing right. I said, well, Lord, they're not going to see it. You know what he said to me, and I have never forgotten. Now, this, is, this, this may sound weird to you, but God said to me, he said, you are going to outlive them all. And I'm like, how am I going to do that? I'm going to live to be 100, 120, 130 or whatever. But I, I, I thought about it for a moment. And the things that he has put in my hands, the things that I'm doing now, they're never going to stop. Mm -hmm. So that all of my accusers, all of my naysayers, all of my haters, mm -hmm. they're going to die. I'm going to transition. Mm -hmm. But guess what? I'm going to still be living forever. Mm -hmm. That's what I love about some folks don't like uh, Facebook and they don't like uh, uh, YouTube and all these social media things. You know what? I love them. Do you know why I love them? Because once you put something on there, you can't get it off. Guess what? All the preaching, all the teaching, all the things I've done, they are going to live forever. That means that long after I've, I've transitioned over, they're still going to be speaking to somebody. There are men and women who are going to still be hearing what God put in my hands, what God put in my mouth, what God put in my heart. So you're going to outlive them. You know, a lot of believers don't believe in, uh, in Facebook. But here's where I look at Facebook. Think about this for a moment. Really, really think about it. Go back and read how Jesus was. He got in some of the worst social circles you have ever seen. That means that they said he's a wine bibber, you know, he's a... He's oh, a liar, all kinds of things. And, and they say he fellowships with sinners. He actually spends his time with sinners. Who wants to be around somebody every time you turn around, sinners are flocking to him. Had a whore, a harlot, to actually pour perfume on his feet. What kind of man is Rehab Rahab, who was a harlot? She was, she was a, 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 what do you call the women that keep a, a house of ill repute, whatever you want to call it. That's who she was. Mm -hmm. But the Bible said she recognized mm -hmm. the power of God on the people of God to such a degree that she was not able to do a lot, but she was able to at least to protect the integrity of the ones who came there. Now, every time you read about the genealogy of Jesus, mm -hmm. which means the, 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 uh, the uh, genealogy of Joseph and the genealogy of Mary, Guess whose name is mentioned in the Bible? Rahab. Rahab. Yeah. She's a she's a, 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 a what we would call today just a hoe. Mm -hmm. I mean that's a, that's what she is, you know. But every time you read, you, next time you feel like you're not good enough, you feel like you know what? Ain't anybody gonna listen to me? I've had such a bad life. But uh, read the genealogy of Jesus. Rahab. A hope. She was there. 
She's every time you tell about Jesus and the genealogy of the, the, the ones who were responsible for him, there she is. So what do you got to be concerned about? So what you didn't do a lot of things right yesterday, <laughs> last month, or last year, or a few years ago. Don't worry about it. If you can have Rahab mentioned in the same breath as, as Joseph, the same breath as Abraham, you know, Isaac, and Jacob, She's right there with them. What you got to be concerned about? Don't be stuck in your past. I tell everybody, everywhere I go, let it go. Yes. I'm serious. Erase your past from your memory, except for the, 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 the ability to use it to be an encouragement. It don't matter. It don't matter. M-A-T-T-A-H. It don't matter where you come from. What matters is where you're going. Amen. That's what matters. Amen. So stop letting people beat you up and where you can. devil say, well, you ain't no good. You ain't worth it. Say, you're right. I'm not. Admit it. Don't run from your past, but don't capitalize on your past. Mm -hmm. Recognize that everybody's got it. That's something everybody's got. Okay. Some of them hide it. Some of them try to get around it. Jesus let it be known that we've got to recognize that we can't camp out there. Jesus uh, said to Joshua, he said to him, Moses, thy servant is dead. Get up and get to moving. The reason you're in the situation you're in and things are not changing because you're standing still. Get up and start moving. I don't know what to do. Don't stand there. Do something. Yes. What, if, what do you do? Believe that God's going to work it out. God's going to give you the answer and start moving. Listen, he is not coming to your rescue because he's already rescued you. Jesus is not coming to your rescue because he has already rescued you. You're just not walking in it. Walk in it. Let it be known that for Jesus I live, for Jesus I die. I don't care what you're going through, move, be in motion. One thing I did in everything I went through, I never stopped moving. But I didn't move countlessly and just beating my air. I, I, I used the word I had inside of me. And I said, how would Jesus handle this? That's why it doesn't bother me to be on certain areas, in, in certain areas that they say that believers shouldn't mess with. So you need to know what's going on. You know, sometimes we, we the, the thing of it is we try to talk to our children. And our children won't talk to us sometimes because we're not a part of that circle. You know how you can really listen to your children sometimes? Get in the circle they're in. Facebook will allow you to do that. Now, they, they're pretty slick. I will tell you right now, a lot of them have, have said Facebook's for old people. They get on Instagram and all this. Get on there too. Follow them around. Because they're going to tell the truth to their, their peers. They'll tell you everything they're doing. And sometimes your ears may peel back, but, you know, you need to know it. Recognize that what the enemy uses for evil, God can use it for good. Yes. Yeah. You just got to recognize it. You got to understand. Don't be like the Pharisees and the Sadducees. The Pharisees and the Sadducees. Don't be like them. Amen. Don't be like them. They're sad, you see. You know, some folks say, well, why are they sad, you see? Because they're sad, you see. They, some folks, they, 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 they took a bitter pill when they woke up. and they, they, they just, They're just sad all the time. That's why the sad, you They didn't believe in the resurrection. They didn't believe there was no life after death. So they had to be sad. I don't blame them. If I didn't believe in the resurrection, I'd be sad. <laughs> they were sad, you see. And, and you got the Pharisee, all these rascals, they all, the scribes, all of them, they were all confused because they were not allowing things to be worked from the root to the fruit. Remember, from the root to the fruit. Amen. Let's look at James 2, um, 14 through 24. It's in your books, but I wanted to highlight the first couple of scriptures that it's talking about faith and works and how they work together. Again, that's James 2, 14 through 24, but I want to just read the first couple of verses. It says, what does it profit, my brother, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can faith save him? 
If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you says to them, Depart in peace, be warmed and filled, but you do not give them the things which are needed for the body, what does it profit? Thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. So we have to remember, we have to follow up with our, our faith, with works. And, you know, and I've had this happen a lot of times when I was first come to the Lord. We used to do witnessing, door-to-door -door witnessing. And a lot of times, you know, in our training, our main focus was they say, just get them saved, get them saved. That's your main focus. But there were some times when we would go to a home where they needed something else. Mm -hmm. And we would just go and say, okay, our, our main focus was, you know, salvation. But I learned that we also had to provide for them. Sometimes it was a meal. Sometimes it was um, clothing, and we were able to direct them to different um, areas. Okay, you need food, you need clothing, you need this. So at the same time, I learned that I could just not say, okay, accept Jesus and leave them, and that's it. But what else do you need? They, they needed clothing. They need whatever the case may be. So that's what it means when it talks about, you know, we can't have faith without the work. Sometimes it takes both. That's that corresponding action. Mm -hmm. You know how we say uh, faith without works is dead. Many take that to mean that works leads the way. It doesn't. Instead of saying work your faith, say it this way. Faith your works. Amen. Instead of saying work your faith, mm -hmm. say faith, faith yeah. your work. It don't it sounds backwards, don't it? It don't sound try to say it. Try to say it. Faith, faith your, your works. works. Sounds yeah. weird, don't it? But that's what has to happen. You have to faith your works. That means that if I believe a thing, my corresponding actions to should adhere to what I believe. Mm -hmm. So I'm not doing it to have faith. Mm -hmm. I'm doing it because I have faith. It's very important. If you're not careful, it'll fly right over your head. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing it to have faith. I'm doing it because I already have the faith. Amen. Yeah. And I can say this, whatsoever is not of faith is sin. If you don't believe in what you're doing, then you're wasting energy. Believe it before you do it. Believe it before you do it. So don't work your faith. Faith your work. Don't work your faith. Faith your works. That means that I'm doing what I do because I believe. That's why I'm doing it. Now you can you can take me and hang me up by my ears. I got little ears. You know, it's gonna be a challenge, but <laughs> you may want to do it. <laughs> but you can hang me up by my ears. And it ain't gonna change my faith. You can say I'm gonna kill you. If you don't denounce him, I can't denounce him because he's real. So you, you say, well, what you going to do? Well, you ain't going to have a life. I'm going to live forever. I'm never going to die. Those of you that last through the way, <laughs> the period of time that's coming, those of you that last through, you'll know what I'm talking about. We're going to be together forever. You might get rid of this. I don't know. This mud's going to be a little different. Now, I'm going to. I'm going to tell you just like it is. I'm going to talk to the Lord when I get there and see if I can't get me a little bit of what we call a dry Jericho. <laughs> 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 Woo! I'm going to be a hat. You're going to see that. Is that you, Alfred? <laughs> you say it ain't no big deal when you probably got hair. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you, that's one of the things that I'm going to appreciate. And I'll be look just like I want to look. And I'm, I don't want the wet one, you know, where you're slinging juice everywhere. No, I don't want that. <laughs> I, want, I want to be dry, you know, and curly, you know. But yeah, yeah, like you, forever. <laughs> hey, we be brothers, man. <laughs> when you get to heaven, you're going to look at me and like, hey. I'm say, hey. <laughs> You know, but, but that's what I look for. I look forward to the day when I can be anywhere I want to be, do anything I want to do, look any way I want to look. And that's what, what holding on to Christ will do for you. This is not life. This is survival. Life is when you know you're going to live again. Mm -hmm. 
And it don't matter. Whatever you're going through, you're going to live again. So don't work your faith. Faith your work. And I wanted to read this um, scripture um, in Matthew chapter 17, verses 19 and 20. It's talking about faith, how much faith. And it only requires a little bit. Sometimes we look at other people that seem to have this great swell in faith and feel like you got to be there for God to hear you or, or make it move. But it says, then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, why could not we cast him out? They were talking about they couldn't cast the demon out. And Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. So remember, all it takes is the faith of the size of a mustard seed, and a mustard seed in the natural is very, very small. So you don't have to have this great swelling faith. All it takes is the faith of the size of a mustard seed. And just like here he said, they asked, why is it not happening? Because of our unbelief. Or we really believe in what we're saying. And remember, it doesn't take great swelling faith. It just takes small faith. And that's what God sees. That's the way it is. So, questions, feedback. What do you think? Wow. <laughs> I'm thinking that way, huh? <laughs> well, I, I have something funny while y'all are thinking. You know, he used to talk about, you know, he wanted hair and all this stuff. So, it was so ingrained in my head that he was going to be in front of me doing this, you know, being caught up. And I was going to get jerry curl juice in my eyes. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, I had this visual of us in this line. So it was funny. But then he said he wanted it dry. So everything worked out. But for the longest time, I'm like, my God, I hope he changes that. You know? <laughs> and he did. <laughs> you know, I mean, I can have it any way I want to have it. You know, that's, that's the way I look at it. I mean, I'm sure you, you, you laugh. You ain't gonna be laughing when you see me over there. You ain't gonna laugh a lick. You gonna leave me your, your mouth gonna drop to the floor because I'm gonna be walking around slinging it. I am not kidding you. I'll be walking around slinging it. <laughs>